Good morning. It's 34 degrees at 704. I'm Claire Stevens with a Z100 information update brought to you by Static Guard. That clock keeps ticking toward midnight Eastern Standard Time. And as correspondent Mark Smith reports, the outlook now for averting war in the Middle East is very bleak. With just over 17 hours left before U.S. forces can go to war to force Iraq's withdrawal from Kuwait, diplomats, military units, and peace activists are on the march. At the United Nations, a Security Council session is planned later today to consider a French proposal which linked an Iraqi pullout with the Mideast Peace Conference. That linkage is rejected by U.S. Ambassador Thomas Pickering. He does so without any indication at all that Saddam Hussein is prepared to move. They're clearly, it's Saddam who should be making the proposals at this stage for how he plans to comply with the Security Council text. But the AP's Dilip Ganguly in Baghdad reports Saddam is making no such plans. Saddam Hussein has not said anything in public, but the newspapers have reiterated his stand. And there is no change in his stand that... This man is not going to give up Kuwait. U.S. troop strength in the Gulf has now reached 410,000 as ground forces maneuver closer to the Iraqi border. Air and sea power in the region has been bolstered by the passage of the aircraft carrier Theodore Roosevelt through the Suez Canal. And an ABC News Washington Post poll indicates about three-quarters of Americans support congressional votes authorizing war in the Gulf and that about half of the people surveyed are in favor of a U.S. attack on Iraq within a month after tonight's deadline for Saddam Hussein to leave Kuwait. Meanwhile, in neighboring Israel, officials are denying any part in last night's killing of two top PLO aides to Yasser Arafat. Tunisian police have arrested several Palestinians, including the alleged hitman, who was a former follower of notorious terrorists. Terrorist Abu Nidal. C100 News Time is 7:06. A five-alarm fire in a Brooklyn factory has finally been brought under control. Firefighters breaking through an iron gate and two locked doors to rescue a trapped night watchman who was huddled in a corner, a corner, barely conscious when they got to him. And talking blazes, Mayor Dinkins has decided against closing any more firehouses, despite the deep financial hole in which the city finds itself. His announcement yesterday came after two brothers were killed in a Richmond Hill fire earlier this month in an area where engine company 294 had been disbanded because of cutbacks. A drug dealer who pleaded guilty to shooting undercover police officer Jerry Ortiz back in 1989 has been sentenced to 19 years to life. Ortiz took two bullets in the back during a bus that went sour. The DA says the man in custody, Curtis Frederick, pleaded guilty to attempted murder charges. Z100 Sports, it was the Kings over the Devils 6-1 and the Knicks losing to the Hawks 96-82 last night. Coming up tonight, the Knicks are off. The Nets are hosting Golden State, and on the ice, the Rangers are home against the Oilers. The Isles are hosting the Bruins. Our Z100 Weather Center forecast, a mixture of sun and clouds today with a high of 46 degrees. The clouds roll in overnight. We're going down only to a mile 35 in Midtown. Rainy and mild tomorrow with a high once again in the upper 40s. At the moment, it's partly cloudy. 30 degrees in Princeton, 28 in Somers, 65 degrees in Saudi Arabia, where the men and women of our American Armed Forces are helping keep the peace. And at 7.07, we have 34 degrees at the Empire State Building. I'm Claire Stevens for Z100.